All right, it's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TJF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our special guest co-host for the week, comedian, actor, actor, and media personality Flame Monroe. What's up, y'all? Hey, hey, uh, so Claudia. Everybody looks fabulous. Everybody looks like they got paid today or something. A little extra, a little extra <laughs> stank on it tonight. Is that what we do? It's Friday night. I'm going to work. It's for working. I'm a working girl. I'm going to work from Friday night. Oh, I don't know. We had Tina Knowles with us this evening. <laughs> it's your joke time. Want to hear it? Here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we drink it tonight, Alan. We do that. You drink it? Absolutely. Yep. I'm still drinking on that little leftover tequila with my blueberries and pineapples. So let's see what we got. All right, Flame. I know you've been sipping on wine coolers this week. We got to get you something something real to drink. That's oh, no, I, I put a little hibiki in this, a little Japanese whiskey. Thank you, Dave Chappelle, for introducing this to me. It's going to grow the hair back on my chest. I'm excited about it. Let's go. Oh, you know what? You want that? I what? You want the hair back on your chest? It was a joke, Claudia. Knock it I don't off. know. I, I don't know these <laughs> days. I just don't know these days. Hairy right, tits, I don't know now. Come on. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, Y'all got any plans this weekend, tonight? What y'all getting into? Al, go ahead. Uh, you know, I'm going to a wine tasting. I'm going to this a vineyard that is interested in doing the buttery Chardonnay line with me. So I'll be there on Sunday. Um, they're going to teach me a little bit about the whole process. They're going to teach me what pairing, what the buttery Chardonnay goes with, and all that great stuff, and help me pick the flavors, if you will, for how I would like to design my wine collection. So that's what I'll be doing this weekend, and pretty much other than that, sleeping. That'll be fun. And oh, wait, Al, are you going to stump grapes? <laughs> I might, I, if that's what it's going to take to get to this bag, I'm going to be stomping some great <laughs> Flame, any plans for the weekend? Uh, immediately following this live taping, I'm going to take my, my podcast, Laugh and Learn, on the Black Effect Network. Four years. We ju I just signed my four-year contract. It is political hodgepodge, along with my beautiful co-host, Bobby Clifford. And what it is, Claudia, it is a way for us to teach people about politics. And after that, we're just going to let the chips fall where they may. I'm in celebration. Thank you, Charlemagne the God. Thank you, Dolly Bishop. Thank you, Black Effect. Four years of politics with this mouth and this man. Come get y'all a piece. It's ABC and fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. Y'all are going to be real busy this weekend. I might go to Vegas tomorrow. I might not, but I want y'all to all tune in. There's going to be a special sneak peek of Deal No Deal Island right after the playoff game on Sunday. A 30-minute uh, sneak peek of the new show I'm on, so I will definitely post about it, so go to my Instagram. All right, everybody here is popping and working, so let's... Oh, before we go to that, Flame, I got to ask you, have you enjoyed this week being our, our guest co-host? Oh, oh my God, Claudia, this has been so amazing. I just want to thank you for making it so easy and Mr. Al Reynolds. You guys have just made it smooth, the transition. For us have never to have met face-to-face -face in person, y'all made it feel like I was a cousin and I appreciate that. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Justin, and all the production in the back. Y'all made it smooth. I'm hoping that TGF, whoever the next guest come in, this is a very important seat. Know that. Tuesday, they saw me on the show. Wednesday, I got an email from a Hollywood producer. Today, I did a voiceover. You just never know who's watching, so be your best be on your best keep this show alive because this show is for us the culture and it's open to everybody so thank you guys i really appreciate it well we appreciate you and having you and we're glad we were able to have you so thank you for being here all right with that being said let's get into it we got a lot of tea to spill and a lot of stuff to talk about peter thomas the ex-husband of former Real Housewives of Atlanta star Cynthia Bailey was arrested for driving under the influence, having no license, no proof of insurance, expired tags, failure to maintain a lane, and violation of a traffic control device. All right, y'all, Peter's bail was set at less than $3,000, and he was able to bond out the same day because Peter ain't broke. He had some money for it. What are your thoughts? Let's go to you first, Al. What do you think? You know, Peter Thomas, I'm mm -hmm. friends with Peter Thomas. He's also, we're trying to make him friends of the show, uh, which I think it's coming along. Uh, <laughs> Peter is like that OG that, that just goes through stuff. And you either like him or you don't. I happen to like him and will continue to support him. I <laughs> find it funny, though, because every time I've hung out with Peter, we've never had to drive anywhere. We were always in one of his limos, like one of his one of his cars was taking us from A to, a to B to Z. So, you know, 
I don't know. Uh, best of luck with him, though. I know that he's going to be okay because that's just how he's made. It's in his DNA. He's always going to be resilient. He's always going to overcome um, setbacks. And to me, this is no different. Al did not want to get cussed out by Peter Thomas tomorrow. I hate that he played that safe. <laughs> you know, you know, Mr. Peter Thomas will pick up the phone and will cuss your ass out about why did you hit me up before you covered me on the show? Y'all know me. And we did that before and we had to, like, actually, it was a whole big thing. But anyway, Peter, we hope you get through it. Blaine, what are your thoughts on the story? Well, I, you listen, DUIs are going everywhere, but no license, no insurance, no, listen, what, Peter Thomas, you're a celebrity, you know better than that, you know, and you know your color, and you're not even a light-skinned one of us, you're one of, us, one of our beautiful dark <laughs> people, you're a good-looking brother, and you in Atlanta, you know they'll pull us over, you should have had a fake ID, you should have called me, I got fake IDs, I got a lot of fake stuff, but I got fake IDs and everything, I hope you get out of it as well, that, yeah. He, I'm, I'm with Al. Trouble seems to follow Peter for some strange reason. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Peter, you listen, we all can get caught slipping. It's, it ain't nothing to like have an expired tag or a license be, you know. Uh, well, uh, yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> right. I'm, trying, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to, I, I mean, we've all had, you know, I, I've got caught slipping, maybe an insurance lapse, but all three of those, what was that, three, four, five things together at once is the issue. All right, let's go to the chat. Um, let's see. Manifest Love said, Peter gonna be mad at y'all for the ninety nine thousand. <laughs> uh, 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 you know that's right. <laughs> and Sunny Levin said, "What's wrong with these folks? Why not hire a driver?" And Care Bear said, "Sorry, Flame, drunk like Tiffany Haddish." Oh, that ain't got I, nothing that to do with me. me. That ain't got nothing to do with me. I ain't got caught slipping yet. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. And other criminal. Oh, that is a shady tease. And I did not write that. In other criminal news, we have an update on the suspect who shot and killed 10 Black people in a racist rampage at a Black supermarket in Buffalo, New York. Now, well, according to federal prosecutor Peyton Gendron, may be up for the death penalty. Peyton is currently serving multiple life sentences with no chance of parole after pleading guilty to state charges of murder and domestic terrorism motivated by hate. What are your thoughts on this update? Because we haven't really heard about it in a while, and it was really pissing me off because it was a bunch of black people in the supermarket, and it seems like when it's us, we hear nothing about it. But if there's a little girl from 25 years ago that went missing, we'll still hear about that. Flame, what do you think? Flame. Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, because you're I'm sorry. Uh, I, I thought this story touched me to my spirit because I'm a, I'm a seasoned black person and he killed people that are even older than me. Most of those most of those victims were seniors and older that get out and doing the daytime and was so strategically planned. He drove hours to get to this location, which means he had time to rethink it, to change his mind or to pray or for God to intervene or something. I am there is no leniency in my heart for him. I feel no pity. I hope that they give him the death penalty. I, I don't care how anyone feels because had it been one of us, we wouldn't even be going through this. We would have been shot and killed on sight. I hope they give him the death penalty. He deserves it. This was premeditated. This was pure evil and pure hate on a bunch of people that couldn't even run to get away. Most of those people were very elderly. He's a piece of shit. I said it. I agree. Brielle said they should put him under the jail. Al, what are your thoughts on this story? <clears throat> My thoughts of production, put that picture back up. Is that is that snot running out his nose and has he been crying? What is that? Because if it is, good. And they should seek the corporal punishment for him. <laughs> right. It's a very strong debate in America about corporal punishment. And I don't know where our viewers stand on taking other people's lives. But I can confidently say this, that jail alone is not enough punishment for what this white guy did premeditated to this group of black individuals. And not just them, but their families. You took somebody's mother, somebody's grandmother, somebody's sister, somebody's cousin, somebody's confidence somebody's church member and it's not right also as african americans as black americans call yourself whatever or just as americans we cannot let this precedent be set that a young white man can come in your community from two hours away and kill black lives or distinct dis extinguish black young black lives or black lives like this we simply cannot allow it not only does he need to be corporally punished but he needs to be it for me i i promise you they need to open it up you know how like back in the day they used to allow you in the jails to go see it they should allow his corporal punishment to be seen by the public 
so that the families could possibly just an inch get close to getting some type of satisfaction for what he did to them. I'm kind of down with that, Al. I like that idea. Pro Production, can you put the picture back up one more time? Because one of the people in the in the picture, the victims, the, vic the victims, I'm sorry, the victims, the one with all the victims, that picture right there, I want to see that for one second. Um, so this story really, really bothered me. The lady in the bottom right corner looks exactly like so much like my grandmother. And I have like an emotional reaction to that, to seeing this like group, that's someone's grandmother, wife, mom, sister, you know, it's so sad to see that going to the grocery store and getting gunned down by some deranged white boy who has been driven by the ridiculousness of this cult-like thinking that is born of Donald Trumpism and MAGA. It's a lot of that going on where they think they're going out and, and, and accomplishing this thing that's like cleansing the palate of America and, and killing all these black people. And it's just like, I'm mad that we haven't heard about this in a long time, but I'm glad that we have Fox Soul that we can talk about on this platform. Hopefully other, other sites pick this up. But just imagine, and, and, and again, yes, death penalty, I'm with that, you guys, you guys, I'm with that. But on top of the death penalty, might I add, we need to make some changes because it seems like the people that are like wrongfully convicted and get this death penalty, they end up getting murdered and electrocuted, right? And then we find, oh, years later, oh, our bad. They were really innocent. This is a case of it's, it's cut and dry. We know this man did it, right? All the witnesses, like he is guilty. Let's not let this piece of crap sit on death row for 20 years, eating up our taxpayers' dollars as he, you know, learns God and figures it out and then gets and, and gets some kind of sympathy from yeah. people. F out of here with that. Like death penalty, get him out of here within 90 days. Like that's what I would like to see. I'm sick of it. Flame, yeah. Flame yeah. you go on with me. You go on with me to this execution. <laughs> Oh hell, I'm I'm listen, I'm gonna get done up like I'm going to a funeral. I'm wearing all, right, all don't black. Don't you think don't you think that would be don't you think that it's like an eye for an eye or two for a two? The family should be able the families that he took their lives, he should be able to go see that execution if he gets corporal punishment. And there was video yeah, of the same one of the family members. Uh, he, he was I'm like, sorry, one of the family members actually tried to attack him on the corporal, like the guy to attack the judge. Mm, mm, mm. But um, they, they all you breaking up, Flame? Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, okay. for the soulmates, uh, what also makes this more disgusting, there's a video of his killings because he live streamed uh, the killings on Twitch. It's like a gaming platform, allegedly. He was live streaming it, so he wanted people to see it. He wanted the smoke. He wants you. To... Oh, so oh, yeah. yeah, to add to y'all, you want us to see you kill them. We want to see them kill you. If How it's done fun. in public, it needs to be responded to in public that's all i'm saying I, yes we want to see it i think it should be a, like a town hall mm -hmm. i'm with it i'll be there i'll meet y'all there all right switching gears while promoting his new christian album lil nas x shared an acceptance letter to the christian college liberty university well a spokesperson for the university released the following statement <laughs> we cannot confirm that Liberty University did not issue the Montero Hills acceptance letter posted yesterday to social media. And we have no record of, um, of Montero Hill applying to the university. Liberty University exists to glorify God by equipping men and women in higher education in fidelity to the Christian faith expressed through the Holy Scriptures. What are your thoughts on Little Nas X? I know we spoke about this, but now you're going, now you're trolling the religious community. You're trolling Christians right now. And now you're getting called out with receipts. Al, what you think about this? The college was like, uh, not up in here. <laughs> it's so funny because Liberty University is where my brother Edwin got his, did his doctoral work in special education. So of course I sent him this because I was like, hey, what are your thoughts about Little Nas X trolling your, your alma mater? And so the funny part was he looked at the letter and said, Al, that's not even the president of the university's signature. That president died a couple of years ago. <laughs> I thought that was... Hilarious. It's trolling as usual. It's tacky as best. I mean, there's nothing new here. It's nothing fun about it. It's nothing shocking about it anymore. It's nothing in, in you know ingenious about it. It's just like tacky. It's tacky, it's boring, and it's all little Nas X, shame on you as an artist. You can do better. And look, buddy, we have a short attention span. You either get our attention back the correct way or your days are numbered. All right. Uh Flame, what do you think? What's that? <laughs> <laughs>
I, I think and it, when I originally heard the story, I thought that he was just giving pushback with all of these Christian antics now because he was denied from the from this college. But now that we see that he's lying, all of this is trying to just garner some attention, I guess, for his new single that's coming out that I have not heard. I'll say he heard it and it was kind of bumping with the music. But I'm telling you, when do you lose yourself as an artist that your lead is antics? If you're a singer, then you sing. If you're a comic, then you tell jokes. If you're an actress or an actor, then you act. All of these antics are not going to get back to Old Town Road. You might need to take a trip back to Old Town Road and come back out again because you're not doing the right thing right now, player. But we're watching you. Oh, but you know what we do have to do, Claudia, is we have to give T.S. Madison a shout out. She's in the video and she did a very good job. I must say that was the best part of the video. But other than that, shout out Big Maddie. We love garbage. We love here. Um, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it, Lil Nas X. We are sick of it. We're over it. All right, y'all, coming up next, find out which music group serenaded Miss Tina Knowles. <laughs> and her bra on her birthday. And later we had taken a trip down memory lane in Fox Souls. Where are they now? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff, like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. <laughs> All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. <laughs> um, <laughs> proxy. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. All right, welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to the soulmates in the chat, rocking it out with us. We appreciate y'all. Um, Al, real quick, you had something, a quick correction? <laughs> we appreciate them so much. So a lot of the soulmates are saying that it's not called corporal punishment, but that it's called capital punishment. So just to let you to let everyone know that they mean the same, both means death by sentence or death due to punishment. So if you want to call it capital punishment, feel free, but you can also call it corporal punishment. Mm -hmm. The soulmates will get you together. Yes, we'll they will, together. especially <laughs> ours. <laughs> yes, they do. All right, uh, Miss Tina Knowles recently celebrated her 70th birthday and shared that she was serenaded by a special group. Check this out. I'm so blessed to be here, and I'm so blessed to have the life that I have and the people that I have around me, all the love. Um, I just got spoiled to death uh, this weekend. I even got serenaded by Destiny Shaw. How amazing is that? First of all, Flame, y'all are like <laughs> twins. I took a screenshot just <laughs> now. Like, y'all look so much alike. All right, we got to go to you first. Uh, Tina Knows 2.0. What are your thoughts of Miss Tina's fountain of youth? at the age of 70, Flame. Listen, happy birthday, Miss Tina Knows. That is my older sister. You know we look just alike. 
I met her and her uh, her ex-husband if they're divorced already, Mr. Richard Lawson, and they were such a pleasant couple at the time. And I always have believed that I'm a part of that family, Claudia and, and Al, because listen, when I do drag shows, I do Beyonce's music, I'm a crazy cancer like Solange, I look like the Mama Tina, but I'm packing like the Daddy Matthew. Hey, nose family! <laughs> oh my God. Happy birthday, a beautiful woman. And I admire her a lot. I really do admire that lady. The strength and the tenacity. And look what she, both of her daughters are magnificent superstars. Cause Solange has not been, Solange's an incredible artist. So I'm happy so birthday. Uh, S. Brown, 1231 said, Flame and Tina are soul sisters. Al, what do you think? Miss Tina knows, uh -huh. 70, Fountain of Youth. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, look, don't be mad at me. I'm just telling you how I feel. She looks good for 70 years old. She's beautiful. She's regal. She's Hollywood music royalty. But move out the way, Miss Tina knows. I need to know what you said. Because what you said was that you were serenaded by Destiny's Child. Now, listen, this is TGIF, and I need some answers. Was it Beyonce, Michelle, and Kelly, DC3? Or was it DC5? Was it Beyonce, Kelly, Michelle, uh, Latavia and Latoya, which who who did the serenade? Because I, you know, I hear and smell a reboot, a reboot or a reunion if they coming together to serenade their mom. I, I listen, and I'm here for it. I would go see it. I think it would be another sold out tour. But I need some answers, Miss Knowles. Who was it, please? Tell us <laughs> over here, because I know you watch TGIF. So go on down in the comments. Get one of your little sisters to type in who was there and let us know if a, if a reboot or a reunion is in the making. You know what I hate? When we name all the former members of Destiny's Child, one woman always gets left out that was in the group. It was a short amount of time, but Farrah Franklin, she's out here in Texas. Oh. Y'all remember the real pretty girl, the light skin girl, the, the green eyes? She was really a cute girl. And um, I feel I be feeling bad for every time that they don't mention her. So I just wanted to shout out Farrah Franklin. All right, y'all, it's 2024, and I'm sure people are feeling stressed and anxious, especially setting new goals for this year. But did you know that sex can release stress? I think we all knew that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need some. Uh, it's been, I, I, I need some. <laughs> you need stress or some sex? Because I'm stress-free over here. Uh -oh. oh, you get, you get it every day. I'm not. I need a... Uh oh. I might have to make some phone calls. All right, according to, uh, to verywellmind.com, sex can relieve stress and anxiety by triggering the release of feel good hormones, including oxycotton. Now, oxycodone, I'm sorry, oxytocin. I had it in so long. drugs on the show. Girl, what's in her head? Oh, she slipped one in her drink before. <laughs> She telling on herself, okay, never know your drug of choice. I told you I don't have no oxytocin in my split. I ain't had no oxytocin, also oxytocin. All right, these That hormones, came out way too easy. Isn't it? These hormones promote relaxation and can help reduce feelings of anxiety. <laughs> what are your thoughts? And do you consider stress a sex reliever, Al? Yeah, I consider sex a stress reliever. Don't forget, it also creates endorphins which is the best stress reliever of all. I mean, yeah, and it's natural. We have to have it. It's a part of our life. And I think if more black women had it, they wouldn't be so stressed out. Damn black men, y'all be one. <laughs> oh my God, Al, they didn't get you. <laughs> they been eating me alive all week, so come on, Brian, come on, come on. You come like on, being dragged. I said what I said. Shoot, oh they get God. mean when they don't get sex. They get mean as hell. Only women, though? Uh, let me think about that. No, y'all be the one that start wars and fight and want to <laughs> get all violent. Okay, Flame, what do you think? Uh, I definitely believe it's a stress relief. I have two teenagers and a gr and an adult, but they all live with me. So when they stress me out, yeah, m my baby comes and relieves me, rolls my back, and takes great care of me, and it takes it away. Plus, it isn't it, it's exercise at my age because you know I, I I do I still try to do stuff that I did in my twenties. You know, I, I throw backs out sometimes, not mine, but I throw backs out sometimes. But I, it keeps me in shape. You know what? I almost threw up my lunch. <laughs> I don't know why, Al. You bisexual. I'm asking you how much you're selling it for. <laughs> I'm saying, you, what the? Listen, I guess every blue moon, maybe, but at this age, I like some just good, regular sex. Consistency is more important to me than, than anything else. 
That sounds boring to me. Mm. I want to be reminded of what I used to do. I'm telling you. <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> I like it when the next day, like you're hurting just a little bit. You know what I mean? I, think, I just think that means that's just like, mm, I, you know, I don't need it every day, but when I do do it, I do like to have a little marathon for sure. All oh, right. Oh, oh, I heard that. Meow. <laughs> For the marathon sessions. All right. Um, yeah. A 71 year old serial bank robber who spent more than 40 years in prison struck again in Los Angeles. Just three years since his last release, Bruce Edward Bell robbed a bank and walked away with $64,000 in cash. Bruce Edward Bell is facing felony charges, including kidnapping in connection to the armed robbery. All right, now, what are your thoughts on this elderly serial robber flame? Let's go to you first. Listen, Al just said the favorite word, consistency. At least he stayed consistent. <laughs> My question is, who was driving the car with his old ass? I love that he got oh, a minute, but I want to know who get out. I didn't get out the bank. I want to know how he got. You know what? This is what I'm going to say about this 71 year old man. He still got it. Because yes. he just got out of prison, right? He just got out of prison for serving a 40 year term, right? <laughs> he was like, I'm going to go dust off this old cowboy gun I got. <laughs> Come to find out the gun was fake, y'all. It was a replica gun. This old man went in there, rubbed on his big gay on his hands. He was like, we're going to take them down. He got <laughs> 65, That's an old gangster. I like it. Oh, he got $65,000 with his, with his arthritis and everything. That bad knee, baby. He took them hips and got out that bank. They had pulled him over in a Volvo. <laughs> oh, hell, is single pink. <laughs> How you gonna get pulled over in a Volvo, y'all? That's like the ultimate, that's the ultimate soccer mom car. Like my mom had that when I was growing up. My mom had one too. It was like a station. Oh, it ran really all boxy and shit. I used to duck down when my when I came when I was pulling up to the school because I didn't want people to see me in that old ass car. Unfortunately, he might have did to go back to jail. Maybe he was institutionalized and he's so used to living that life after 40 years that you know he couldn't make it out yeah, of that, you know, so that he did something to go back. It does. Trish EM said some people just love prison or are kind of addicted, low key or institutionalized. institutionalized. And, Fo and Foxy BRM once said he had 40 years to learn his lesson. You can't change a leopard spot. Shaking my damn head. Oh, the elderly bank robber. That is kind of funny. All right, y'all. Coming up next, Fox Souls. Where are they now? And later, a Texas representative calls out Republicans and she let them have it. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. Hit that like button. We'll be right back. Got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's so good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. I don't want to jump you, but you don't even qualify to speak on yourself. <laughs> You're so fucking good. TGIF, live and interactive. I need to clear this up, y'all. You are one of the main ones trying to push the narrative that your girl can't cook. Al has been to my house. I can cook. I'm going to test you out right here. What are acceptable types of smoked meat to put in the collard greens? Turkey necks. Oh. <laughs> don't do me. On Fox Soul. Don't you do me. <laughs> don't try it.
All right, welcome back to TGIF. All right, soulmates, have you guys ever wondered what would happen to your favorite child actors? Are those viral sensations that broke the internet at some point in time that we were all talking about? Well, gather your tea and let's take a trip back down memory lane in Fox Souls. Where are they now? All right, do you remember Cree Summer? Remember she played the role Freddie in A Different World? Remember, mm -hmm. remember her? Mm -hmm. All right, well, 31 years ago, I'm sorry, 31 years later, Cree is still dominating the game of entertainment as a voice actress who voiced some of our characters in animation such as Susie Carmichael from Rugrats, Penny from the original version of the Inspector Gadget, in the role of a Melder Duff in Tiny Toon Adventures. She had one of those voices that were very memorable, and I, I, I'm so glad that she's still making money doing that because you make a lot of money doing that. What are your thoughts on Cree's success? Let's go to the person who just got a voiceover booking because you were on TGIF, Flame Monroe. What do you think about this, Flame? Thank you, soulmates, for that, baby, because, yes, I did get a book. I'm the, I knew she was doing that because I kept up with her career. She has such a talent with changing the, the, the rhythm in her voice and changing the sounds of her voice. And it's a lot of money in voiceover a acting. I, I, look, I learned that today. Uh, that was fantastic. I knew that. I knew she was very successful in it. And I loved her as Freddie on A Different World back in the day. Yeah, with the curly hair and so, the eclectic look. She was a very funny character. Congratulations to you, Cree. All these years still working sometimes you don't have to be in the floor light to see that you're still making that silent money and one thing about uh voice acting is you have much shorter days like they can't work you 12 10 hour days like they can as an actress so that's great uh, al what you think about this i find it amazing this black woman I, if i'm not mistaken she's from southern california she still looks good she's in her 50s and killing it she has never stopped acting because voiceover is acting. She has never stopped acting. And she is probably one of the biggest names in voiceover. If you look at her IMBD from, from 1983, I think it's when she came off a different world to 2006, she had over 101 voiceover jobs. If you go on her IMBD, the, the, the thing just keeps going down, 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 down. Shout out to her. Way to turn your acting career into something really lucrative. She's one of the highest paid and I can't give her nothing but all her roses right now. Keep up the great job and can't wait to see what you're doing next. Dana right. said she's the voice over queen. Flame, are you going to say something else? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Save that voice, girl. That's five thousand dollars worth of uh, <laughs> five minutes, probably. <laughs> All right. Let's get back. To I promise you, it was the laugh. <laughs> let's get back to some more topics. Since the passing of ninety-four-year-old Josephine Wright, Tyler Perry stated that he will honor his commitment by handing her family home the keys. I'm sorry, handing her family the keys to her new home. Tyler wrote, "My prayer is that you rest in peace." knowing that I will honor the commitment that I made to you. I know you'll be watching us as uh, I hand those same keys over to your family. Now, for those who don't know, Josephine caught the attention of social media for her determination to protect her family's property when developers were really pressuring her to sell. What are your thoughts on this gesture? Al, let's go to you first. Well, first of all, Tyler Perry, this is amazing. I love Tyler. I love the fact that Tyler Perry stood by his word, and he is a man of his word. So, of course, he was going to come through. Um, when Tyler Perry got behind this woman and her calls and all the drama, we knew he was going to help. And it, I just, it, this is just so heartwarming that he actually does everything that he says, right? And he does it in such a positive way. And if you're going to do it, if you're going to have power, if you're going to have access, Access, if you're going to have celebrity, if you're going to have everything that he has money, then this is how you do it. However, now this is what I like. Tyler Perry is good at a lot of things. And you know, with that recent dark cloud around who this person was in Hollywood that could have, you know, done that to Claudia's friend or whatever, the thing that I also liked about Tyler Perry was even though everybody was up and down his comments on his page, he never turned his comments off. He never blinked an eye. I find that quite fascinating. And in fact, because if you've been watching my Instagram, I'm launching a UT page. Stay tuned, because that's one of the things I'm going to talk about on it. All right. All right, Flame, what do you think about this story? 
I, I, listen, I think Tyler is a king. So I think Tyler Perry is a king. I know he's a secret Santa. Every year at the Walmart, I've been trying to figure out which Walmart it was so I can go put me a layaway in so my secret Santa can pay for it. <laughs> and I love that he employs thousands and thousands of all people, all races in Atlanta. He has blown Atlanta up with, as a Hollywood black maker. And I think it's fantastic what he did to that. Tyler is super rich and super kind. And he shows his kindness by helping other people. That is why he's continued to be blessed and successful through even with a past all the BS because he's always helping the common man baby I love you Tyler Perry I think thumbs up I think you and Medea both need to hang out with me I think that'll be a party baby <laughs> listen we can't take away from the things that Tyler Perry has done uh, when it comes to ownership in in the entertainment space like no matter what criticism some way trying to give him or his movies I remember people he's always roll the rise at Tyler Perry movies but he turned those laughs into uh, lots of zeros. I, I will say this. Um, he he does a lot of stuff like this. And all the people that do work for him, they they do say they he worked their ass though. I mean, he they work he worked them hard, worked their butts off. And but he does take care of the same people over and over and over again. He, he reemploys them. He does big gestures like as far as gifts. He does a lot of that kind of stuff. And he does watch TGIF. Let me tell you one time. I interviewed Monique when I had Out Loud and there, she made a bunch of claims on the show and it was really explosive. It had a whole bunch of views. Y'all go look at that video. And I got a phone call from an Atlanta number and it was Tyler Perry. He didn't call me irate and we had a long talk for like 45 minutes about things. And it was um, it was cool that he did that. And uh, if you Al have... said something very pertinent. Al said he didn't cut off his comments. You know why he didn't cut off those yeah. comments, Al? Because mm. he wanted to see who was going to say the horrific stuff about him so he would know who never to work with. Ooh. Ooh, okay, you better Black. pay attention, baby. You, Black, you better get that job down there in Tyler Perry Studios. I'm selling it. I'm selling it. You better, selling get, that it. Job, <laughs> you better get that job, baby. Voice over, she do it all. Voice over, stand up, leading roles, step in, step out. Listen, I got about 20 unpaid employees on YouTube right now, baby, just blasting me. Thank you for all of that press. I love it. <laughs> Let's go. All right. All right. Keep it locked because coming up next, a Texas representative calls out Republicans. And later we discuss the allegations against Alabama state prisons. Here we go. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. <clears throat> freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. So what's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then something happens. You're in prison. <laughs> T-G-I-F. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slaves, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all, people all over social media are talking about Texas Representative Jasmine Crockett for calling out the Republicans on their BS. Take a look. And let me tell you why nobody wants to talk to y'all behind closed doors, because y'all lie. 
That's just the bottom line. You have done it thus far in this investigation. You have done it this far as it relates to this committee. In every single hearing, y'all spin, spin, spin. I don't know how y'all are still standing right now because you should be quite dizzy from all the spinning that you're constantly doing when it comes to spinning the truth. All right, Jasmine, continue to criticize the Republicans for their efforts to impeach President Joe Biden. What are your thoughts on Representative Crockett calling our Republicans flame? What do you think? Listen, our era had Maxine Waters. This era has Jasmine Crockett, baby. That lady is gangster witty. She's actual and factual, and she's not afraid to put their feet to the fire. Everybody wants to be timid and walk over eggshells. I admire this woman's strength, tenacity to stand up to people who we know are making the wrong change. Uh, listen, support Jasmine Crockett. Whatever we need to do, by any means necessary, I, I appreciate her. I appreciate her. All right, Al, what are your thoughts? I'm going to pass it back to you, Claudia, because, you know, I, everything she said was correct. You two are our uh, political pundits, so go for it. Well, I'm here in Texas. I'm proud that she's one of our representatives, and she is awesome. She's been doing this. Like, this ain't the first time, and it's not the last. She, she often gathers them by their edges, and they have nothing to say but just sit there looking stupid because she calls them out. She calls them out in a way that is brilliant, intelligent, spicy, smart, and able for the average person to, to comprehend. She doesn't talk over people's heads, which a lot of Democrats are very guilty of doing, and they come off elitist, and that's why people don't understand what they're trying to say. She does right. it in a way where it's plain, plain speak, but it's also not dumb, and she is reading them for filth in the most brilliant and eloquent way. I love you, Representative Crockett. I will always support you, and I will definitely, uh, I want to be part of the campaign. I really do. I'm helping you out here in Texas if I can. All right, y'all, so switching gears to a heartbreaking story, a college professor, Dr. Antoinette Bonnie uh, Candia Bailey, was allegedly bullied to the point of suicide in Jefferson City, Missouri. Now, Dr. Bailey was allegedly harassed and mistreated by the president of Lincoln University, Dr. John Mosley, and the other university officials. Now, it's reported that Dr. Candia Bailey's cries for help were, in fact, ignored by the university, and now... The community wants Dr. Mosley and uh, university officials fired at the very least. Now, President Mosley is currently on voluntary paid administrative leave because that's what they do for the white man. Uh, Al, what are your thoughts on this? First of all, this is heartbreaking. And I want to send my condolences to her family and, and to her fellow staff and everyone that's worked with her. You know, this is a very relatable story for me for many reasons, because I too am a professor. But more than just that, my heart goes out to anyone, and that is soulmates included, who has to go through a toxic work environment. The toxic work environment is so freaking stressful. It actually changes your life. It actually will, if, if navigated or curated correctly, how people who participate in toxic work environments, it can make you think about death. And in this particular place, this woman, her only out, guys, think about it, her work environment was so toxic that her only out was to take her own life. How sad is that? That president needs to go underneath the jail, that board of trustees needs to join him, and everybody related to that university in which she filed a complaint with and didn't do anything about it, you need to be put on the list too to be, to be um, judged and to to be tried. I find this despicable because like all of us, and I know soulmates can, can attest to this, sometimes when you're in a toxic work environment and you say, let me be vocal, let me tell my truth, and let me let me share with and do the protocol, you do it, and then you become the problem. They end up pointing at you saying, oh, you're the problem. I don't think it's right, and I can't wait to see justice serve in this situation. That president should never be a president at any other university ever again, if it's true that he knew about this toxic work environment and not give her any relief. Don't I know about this? I'm always, <laughs> I do. I get attacked constantly for speaking up for what's right. And it's happened before at a place of employment. And, um, you know, a lot of times people don't want to hear it. They just want to, like, be quiet, be a good employee, shut up. You know, don't rock the boat. You're causing problems. You're making it uncomfortable when really you are fighting really for everyone that you're with right now and the people that come after you. And it's super important. But bullying people to the point of them wanting to take their life, life when she's just trying to do the right thing, she's just wanting a better work environment. There's nothing wrong with that. And this happens more than y'all know. This is so freaking common. And with black women, we're under extra 
um, stress because and pressure because when we complain, we're bitching, we're angry, we're bitter, we're messy, we're doing this, that, and the third, and no one wants to take what our message is seriously. And then you have to just complain to your friends or usually take it home to your to to to, to deal with it by yourself. This should have never happened. The fact that this white man did this and he's in a leadership position out of school where he can actually do this to more people is 1,000% ridiculous. Not only should he be fired, there should be more, more penalty. Consequences, if, yeah. Yeah, like, what the hell? What are you doing? Um, Flame, what do you think about this? Again, like Al said, prayers to the family and, uh, you know, everybody that knew this woman because if she was in this position, she had a lot of students. She touched a lot of people's lives. Mm -hmm. But bullying, and, and mind you, this is an adult woman that was being bullied. And bullying is so bad in this country right now from all different capacities and nationalities and religions and identities. So imagine children being bullied like that. This was a grown woman who took her own life. I understand workplace toxicity, but bullying is bad everywhere and it really needs to be addressed. That needs to be a bill that really needs to be fixed, Claudia, because bullying really does make, and if you have a weak constitution, you're not strong in your DNA. Right. The result of bullying is just what this woman did because you don't see any other way out. So you take your own life. Someone really needs to pass a bill about and making bullying more serious because when I was a kid, bullying was just making noise and maybe a fight. But now it's to the pressure of you can go on the internet and one person can say, oh, I don't like Al Reynolds. And he get a hundred other people that he will never meet in his life to say that. But if he's having a bad day and he sees that, he, he receives that and he could do something drastic. Bullying needs to be addressed majorly in this country for real and, and i'm glad you brought that because like it ain't about just oh you're tripping about some issues at work at least you got a job or all that nonsense you might just have had an, an awful day already you might have had a breakup your parent could have just recently passed you might have just found out you have breast cancer whatever you don't know the things that people are dealing with right now we're in crazy times right now. We're worried about World War III. We're worried about losing our rights in this country. And if you get raped, you can't get an abortion. We're worried about the rights being taken away. We have never been in times like this before in my lifetime, in our lifetime. And then on top of the everyday stresses of just being black in America, you got to go online. Your emails are getting blown up. This guy is harassing you. Who knows what other people and in the field that he's poisoning their minds. I think this is terrible. And I feel so sad that she didn't feel like she can go to someone before that she did this. We have some comments. Uh, Sunny Lovin said, I pray there's a paper trail left by her. And uh, I, be, I Shad said, he should be fired in charge. And Callie Girl said she was an alumni too. So she loved that university. Mm, loved that that's place. super sad. Yeah, imagine that she's just like, mm. imagine where you came up, Al. You feel like you have love for that place. So it ain't as easy as just leave and go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <sighs> okay, y'all. And some good news. An Ohio grand jury has decided not to prosecute 34-year-old Brittany Watts for charges related to her miscarriage. In 2022, Brittany was charged with felony abuse of a corpse after she miscarried a non-viable fetus in her home bathroom. Now, Brittany said she will continue to fight and push for legislation to ensure no other woman in the state of Ohio will have to put healing from grief and trauma on a back burner to fight for her freedom and reputation. This story hurts me so mm -hmm. bad, but I'm glad to have a happy ending. Any woman out there mm -hmm. who has gone through the pain of a miscarriage knows what this mm -hmm. feels like to mm -hmm. feel like a failure as a woman that you couldn't carry your baby to term. And then the panic feeling of seeing your fetus or embryo in a toilet mm -hmm. or wherever it was discharged and then not knowing what to do, being by yourself, men making these fucked up laws, excuse me, s &P, just bleed me out. I, it, there's no other word for it. Please stop. Please consider your daughters that if this happens to them, there's a law that she had to wait and be in limbo to see if she's going to get charges on top of the depression and sadness of losing your child. This should have never been a thing. This should mm. have never been a thing. I get the charge was the way she disposed of the body. You can, might I say, you might not be in your right mind when you just have a miscarriage and you see that coming out of your body, your baby. Al, what do you think about this? Um, what's my favorite saying? My favorite saying is, where's the outrage? And I'm serious about this. It's not just about the emotional state that a woman is going through. 
um, when she miscarried and, and what does she do in that panic moment? This is even worse than that. This woman became the poster child. People were giving her death threats on a daily basis. People were calling her all types of names. People were posting her picture on, on posters and going outside of birth clinics like and stuff. I, I don't understand where is the outrage? Where is the outrage for all these women groups that are supposed to be protecting women like this? Where is the outrage? Where was the where was the putting the arms around her to make sure that she was protected and that she got the lowering that she needed? You know, I we we start a GoFundMe account for a whole lot of people, but for me, this is one black woman that needs a GoFundMe account. The legal cost that it took for her to battle this based off of the fact that she had a miscarriage and now she is like this poster child for someone who kills babies. How dare you do that to her? And think about all the mental distress that she's going to have for the rest of her life because everywhere she goes, those who don't believe in the right to choice and women can decide on their own what to do with their bodies are calling her all types of names and want her dead. This is insanely sick. Sad. And like I said from the top of the story, where is the outrage for how she's been treated and how she's continuing to be treated? But thank goodness in this case, justice was served. Wayne, what do you think? Mm. I'm glad she survived it, but Al, I don't agree with you with the women's groups rallying around her. Men have made these decisions and put women in these positions to have to do this. Men, men should only get inside women's bodies when they're invited. But men keep putting themselves in a place to say what a woman can do and cannot do with their bodies. And it's, and it's preponderous. Prayers to this woman. It is ridiculous. And this woman has to live with that. Thank God she survived this. But this is the problem right here. We have to make change in laws. This is why your vote is very important, ladies. You got to vote for you because they're going to keep putting men in offices that tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body. So if you're molested by your uncle or a Creepy cousin or your dad, you got to carry this child and look at this child the whole time. Let's put people in positions of power with your powerful vote to make change for you. For you. I get that, I get that flame, but I'm saying in this particular case, I strongly believe in this particular case, if this was a white woman, there would have been more advocacy groups that put their arms around her and ushered her through this process. Now, the fact that she's a black female, I just felt like in, from what I can read and what I can see, she was kind of left out there. It's, there was some help. I don't want to be I don't want to be totally rude to everybody that did help her. But why haven't we been reading about this? Why hasn't she been a, a, a person that we look for as far as it relates to justice in our bodies as females? That's what I'm saying. We yeah. know men are against this anyway. But the women in the time of need, where were you all? Where is all the outrage around? On what this black woman is going through. That's and all I'm saying. The I, understand, why I, think I understand the miscarriage, Claudia, because I didn't have a miscarriage, but me and my baby mama in 2005 lost the son. So I remember how she was and the depression. Even I was depressed. We, it, 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 it carries over to so many other people that's affected by it. Not just that person, but mainly that person. It's, mm -hmm. it's very scary. Um, I know we don't have time, but um, no, I won't, I won't share that, but Men, you will never know what it feels like to, to go through this. So stop with these stupid laws. Stop. And women, Republican women, women, white Republican women, I'm speaking to you right now. If you do not ever, if you don't join with Democratic women just, as, just for this one issue alone, you will be next. You will be next. This affects all of us. We got to stop voting for our dumb, with our dumbass partners that are not looking out for your rights and the rights of your daughters. And you have to vote for what you, you're a woman first before a Republican. These Republican policies will have you up for against charges for having a miscarriage and not knowing what to do. That's, That's all I'm crazy. Saying. We got to go take a break. Coming up next, we're going to discuss the allegations against Alabama state prisons. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. 
we got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. A uh, real quick in the, in the chat, all for kicks at Claudia, you be spilling the tea and we love you for it. Vulnerability and strength. I just really feel, I really feel for women in this country. And I just have to like, even if it embarrasses me or share some of my own personal traumas, and I don't care if y'all call me soldier boy, I've been through a lot. I'm 50 and I can relate to the, like a lot of these stories because some of the stuff has happened to me. And I just want people to care and not just say a story on a surface level where it's like, we ain't really feeling it. I want to put feeling behind these things. So y'all know how serious this stuff is. That little young black, young black woman should not have been by herself and dealing with this and be criminalized. And that's how I feel about that. And that's on period. All right. Alabama state prisons are being accused of modern day slavery for allegedly leasing prisoners to work at fast food restaurants for only $2 a day. According to documents, Alabama state officials made $450 million from their convict leasing scheme. Now, we don't have a lot of time for this, but this is a really important story. So let's get into it. Flame, what do you think? Listen, the, Shawsh the movie The Shawshank Redemption showed the same thing, and that was back in the 50s or the 40s. This is 2023. Nothing has changed. It just shows you that a lot of things need to change. They need to implement laws for that because that's ridiculous. That is just disrespectfully ridiculous. I'm right. already a prisoner. Now I got to be a prisoner at home. Um, it's, I'm sorry. It's just, oh, my God, Jesus. Al? I need more clarity. Like, are we saying that it's a scheme or a scam? Because if it's a scheme, it could be a work a work out program. So, I, I mean, is it a scheme or a scam? I mean, do the people that are going to work at these fast food do they do they? It's not through the court system that they were assigned to this, or is it? You know, they've been paying under the table. Anyway, whatever it is, it's so funny because I, I called a friend of mine who's the manager of a Wendy's. <laughs> he said, what? This has been going on forever. <laughs> he said, you know, unfortunately, ex-cons, this is where they can find work. So it's the same thing, pretty much. But, least, but least they're not ex-cons. They're in jail. They're in I know they're in jail. I mean, but I'm, I'm wondering, is it a scheme or is it a scam? That's all I want to know. With it's them. slavery. So when slavery ended, white America was like, damn, we lost all our free labor. What are we going to do? Because we don't want to do the work. So mm. they started being over-policing and really coming up with a lot of laws that really targeted the black community and all that. We know that, right? So then they got their labor that way, like from jails. And it's very, 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 we don't have enough time to get into that. But the way that they're doing this, it's legalized slavery, $2 a day. So it's not technically for free. And that's how they're doing it. And I bet you the majority of the people are, once again, black, brown, and poor. And they mm. are out there. No, here. we did. No, you're right, Claudia, because everybody who did it was black. Yeah, there it is. And Victoria's, all these huge, huge corporations are getting free, cheap labor. And then we got white America complaining about this. We're the jobs. The jobs with your, your, your rich white corporate people that are using, they're paying for prisoners instead of paying you your regular wage. Um, we have laws of attraction to <laughs> claim you are a great co host. We enjoyed you. I want to give you that. Okay. Before, uh, we've covered so many crazy stories, so we like to end our show by handing out an award to a person that exemplifies pure delusion. This is our Tea Bag of the Week.
All right, you probably guessed it. Our tea bag of the week goes to Little Nas X for his recent antics having to do with the Christian religion. What do you have to say about our honorary tea bag of the week? Ten <laughs> seconds each. Go, Al. Hey, he deserves it. He's probably one of the best tea bag choices that we've had in a long time. <laughs> Take that tea bag, Little Nas, and wear it well. All right, Flame. Hey, Lil Nas X, if you teabag me, I'm gonna teabag you back. I got two sets. Oh, Come in. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I want to say. Fix your face out like you ain't never been teabagged. My nasty, filthy co hosts that are so sexually <laughs> depraved tonight. Al Reynolds <laughs> and Flame Monroe, thank you for joining me. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Street Play, but have a great weekend. Watch the repeat tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. <laughs>